After learning the basics on how to use the lathe, in this episode we'll finish making our cup for a tank from stock aluminum. Hi folks, I'm Custom Chess for Roma Custom Bike and I'm back to wrap up the Gaston Cup project that we started in the previous episode. If you missed it, there is a link right in the description. But to quickly recap what we did, we gave a detailed look at the different parts of the lathe and how they work, from the cutter to the gears, and this all before getting into the job at hand. We took a piece of stock aluminum tube and reduced the circumference of the bottom portion so that it would fit into the base that we modified. And that's where we left it off. So now we're going to use the rotational properties of the top slide in order to shape the rest of the cylinder at an angle. Kind of like a, a shot glass, per se. Then we'll do the same to the inside. And lastly, we'll cut the shape of a crown, and if it all goes well, we'll have a perfect little ornament for our gas tank. But most important of all, we'll have gotten some practice on this phenomenal tool. So, let's get right to work and start tapering the outside shape of the cylinder. To do it, we take advantage of the ability of the top slide to rotate on itself, and we set it at an angle. To get some accuracy out of this little lathe, we had to set up all the backslash adjustment screws pretty tight, and this made operating the hand wheel pretty hard. So we figured that to save our hands, we could power rig it the redneck way. <laughs> so we hooked a power drill to the hand wheel and voila, you've got a power assisted lathe. This was a lot of fun. We ran the cutter up and down the stock at an angle, trying to achieve the full taper that we wanted. The power drill made it very easy, and by controlling the speed, we could control how good of a finish we would get. As I've mentioned, these tools are crap, and they get pretty dull quickly, so using some lubricant helps making them last a little bit longer. As you can see, we're getting a pretty consistent chip. Watch out though, because it's very sharp. After some work, some fun, fun work, we get exactly what we wanted. A shot glass shaped aluminum object that fits perfectly onto the base cup. Now it's time to work on the inside taper. We have invested on some slightly better tools made of solid carbide. They still need some modifying to fit onto our tool post, but as you know, we're not scared of that. Using our handy power drill and copiously lubricating our tool, we start working the inside of the cylinder. I take a look around, but nothing's there. Working the inside makes it much harder to see what you're doing, so we decide to take it easy and remove less material per each pass. take long for our piece to be done and I have to say that the new tools leave a much better finish. Yeah, they cost quite a bit more but what a difference. 
Let me just take a second to thank you all for the support you demonstrate every day by hitting the like button, by sharing our videos on your social networks, and by subscribing to our channel. Now you can click on the little bell to receive a notification when I publish a new video, so you can see them as soon as they're out. I also would like to invite you to visit our site, it's called www.romacustombike.com, where you can find our unique accessories and our t-shirts, because nothing is better than posting in the real world. We're now on the final leg of this project, cutting the four points and revealing the crown shape we're after. To do that, we first need to draw the shape of the points. Some painter's tape come in quite handy for the job. I'm figuring it out as I go, and I'm going old school. No CAD, no computer, just some good old geometry. Do you remember when you were in school and used to say, when am I gonna ever use this geometry crap in the real world? Well, <laughs> there it goes. I worked out the placement of the four points on paper, and then I transferred them into the stock. The next step is to draw the iconic ball-shaped points with a compass. Then we need to figure how deep can the cut be. We need to leave some space for the screws and washer that we'll be using for fastening the crown to the base. So we transfer the measurements to the tape and draw the shape using an old trick of mine. I like to use a piece of hard heat transfer tape used to finish off the edges of Formica shelfings as a ruler. It offers a hard edge for tracing line with a pencil, but is flexible enough to follow the contour of a curved surface. I suggest you try it next time, because it works like a charm. While I finish the design, Polsky Rage is working on the washer that will need to put the two parts together, but we'll see that later. The piece is ready to be cut, and I begin with drilling some holes at the bottom of each cut. It's now time for a grinder surgeon to do its magic. I'm just gonna let him do his thing. Polsky Rage is a true artist. This is a pretty delicate work. One false move and we'll need to start over again. We are ready for it, don't get me wrong, but I prefer not to. Things in life you'll see one day don't do drugs, don't just love, don't do anything that makes you happy. It will pay up one day. You will get your share one day. You might get your share. You'll be The rough shape is done and now it's time for some good old elbow grease and a file. The heat from the grinder has cooked the tape's glue and it's coming off, making it pretty hard to see the contour that we have to follow. Still, pretty fascinating work. Mm -hmm. 
I find that this type of manual work really relaxes me. I can manage to reconnect with the basic essence of life and the materials that Mother Earth has to offer. And that right there is some very zen shit, my friend. <laughs> But the shape is finally done. Back in the lathe, we use some sandpaper to polish off the edges and the scratches that the file has left behind. Here it is, all the parts we need are done, including the custom washer that Polsky was working on before. We can now assemble our piece of bike jewelry. The screw goes through the base and the washer sits on the lip that we left inside the crown. A nice brass bolt adds the extra regal touch to the piece. Polsky Rage can now have the pleasure of putting it on his bike. You may remember we built this gas tank in the previous episode. If you missed it, you can find the link in the description. Wow, it looks really, really good. I'm so proud of what we managed to achieve using a 500 euros, 25 years old, East Germany made lathe. I wish that the workers that manufactured this wonderful machine, while oppressed by a totalitarian communist regime, could see what wonderful thing they allowed us to make with the fruit of their labor and ingenuity. Well, our time is running out and I'm very happy with what we did in this episode. And what do you think? Let me know by visiting my Facebook page called Roma Custom Bike ENG or by commenting right here on YouTube. I'd like to remind you that along with subscribing to the channel, if you'd like, you can also visit our site www.romacustombike.com to find the accessories we have been producing and our t-shirt. I am Custom Chess for Roma Custom Bike and I'll see you next time.